Hi, this is Sally Morgan, physical therapist, craniosacral therapist, and Tellington T-Touch practitioner for animals and people. This is Tristan, he's a corgi, and this is an episode of Conversations with a Corgi. And here in New England, we are anticipating the arrival of our first snow, some of us not so happily. <laughs> and uh, I, I, the kids are bumming because they're not gonna get out of school for this one. And of course that snow has fallen all over Mississippi and Tennessee and places that are not used to snow. So it's been a little exciting on the East Coast today and it will get more so. We're going to a big Christmas party this evening and the snow is supposed to be the heaviest at the arrival time. So that'll be exciting. Anyway, Tristan and I are here to talk to you today, following up on our series about some of the jobs that dogs have with us. And today we're gonna to talk about service dogs. We talked about comfort dogs that are crisis relief dogs that go in during a disaster or a crisis situation to bring people comfort. We talked about therapy dogs doing reading work, working in the mall, working in the airport to help people feel more relaxed and comfortable. We talked about canine good citizens who are dogs who have passed a basic test for obedience and manners that um, are starting to be a criteria for um, places to live, hotels, things like that. And we also looked at um, the TDI test, the Therapy Dogs International Test and what you need to do to be a TDI therapy dog. And is your dog appropriate for therapy work? So today we're going to talk about service dogs and service dogs have a very high level of training um, they and sometimes that that skill is innate in them and they are trained to perform specific tasks that help their people uh, manage their disabilities and that can be a number of different things that dogs do um, they work as a team with their handler who has some kind of disability and they help the handler have safety and or independence. And people uh, traditionally have not been allowed to pet service dogs because you don't wanna distract them from their jobs. As I've mentioned in some prior episodes, I am a person who, uh, working with many others who have service dogs, I'm trying to combat this a little bit because not all dogs are working all the time. Dogs are social animals. And if someone wants to pet them and the person is in a safe place and they're not in any kind of medical danger, then why not allow the dog to enjoy petting from other people? Now, this does not mean that the dog is just gonna be standing in the middle of the street with 15 people petting him. But if you are in an office situation and the dog is quietly laying by the desk, why can't someone give the dog a little scratch behind the ears when they walk by if the dog is not actively working. So that's a sensitive area for a lot of people. Um, they have strong feelings on both sides of petting or not petting um, service dogs and many people um, really prefer to use the dog's vests that say do not pet working service dog um, because that does give them a distinction away from being just a pet or um, an animal companion, or we also talked about emotional support dogs. So the thing with the petting again is petting the dog could prevent the dog from doing his job correctly. So if that's not happening, if you're able to still do your job and get a pet, then you should be able to get a pet, I think. And most service dogs owners prefer them to not be petted because it does actually put a burden on that person to have to socialize with you and all of that. The Americans with Disabilities Act, the ADA, protects the rights of people with disabilities. And so those people, because of their rights as disabled citizens, are allowed to bring their dogs everywhere, grocery stores, restaurants, hotels, churches, schools, airports, airplanes. And then there is additional laws under the Department of Transportation Air Carrier Access Act and HUD, the Housing and Urban Development Fair Housing Act and the Federal Rehab Act that protects the rights of people with disabilities to have their service animals with them under circumstances not applicable from the Americans with Disabilities Act. So a service dog basically can go anywhere with a person, 
we looked at animal assisted therapy. So if you're a therapist and the dog is working with you, that dog can be in your therapy setting, which could be therapeutic riding or working in a school or a rehab facility. And we looked at emotional support dogs who do not enjoy the same abilities to go anywhere with their people that service dogs do because those emotional support animals are basically pets and they consider the people that make these laws um, service dogs not really pets which I have an issue with and so do a lot of people and then we looked at therapy dogs and how therapy dogs can go into schools and places like nursing homes and hospitals to provide comfort companionship and uh, pleasure to people that are in those facilities and of course service dogs can go to those places and it is a very rare and particular circumstance where a service dog can also be a therapy dog because a service dog has been trained to relate to a person and to help that person with their particular issues and we are all familiar with seeing eye dogs less familiar maybe with hearing dogs who help um, alert people to things like uh, the tea whistle going on on the stove so they don't burn their house down or you know even hearing soup bubbling over on the stove or the doorbell or the phone ringing or um, the alarm going off to get up in the morning many people who are hard of hearing or deaf really rely on their dogs to keep them safe because <clears throat> they can't hear things that might be important for them to hear um, and there are many stories of hearing dogs saving people's lives during fire alarms going off and uh, stopping them when maybe a distant car is honking um, and there's a situation where they shouldn't cross the street hearing dogs are critical and then there are seizure alert dogs and for some people who have multiple seizures many times a day these dogs can be really lifesavers because they can keep you from being in a vulnerable place like a subway platform if you're about to have a seizure those dogs are very important and that's what my dogs do i don't have very many seizures but <clears throat> i've had a few and my dogs have been able to tell me and head injuries from riding one horse <laughs> one head injury and <clears throat> then we also have dogs that alert people to low blood sugar and there are dogs that alert people to different cardiac issues there are many kinds of service dogs there are larger dogs that help people with their balance and pick them up if they fall down there are dogs that help people with pretty serious emotional or psychiatric diagnoses um, again by keeping them calm keeping them present uh, certainly many veterans with PTSD have been able to get service dogs to help them not just emotional support dogs so service dogs do a lot of really important jobs in the world and we are really grateful to them and I have a friend who's blind and she's had I don't know probably in the time I've known her four German Shepherds that have been her seeing eye dogs and she keeps her dogs when they quote retire and she gets the new one and then that um, retired dog becomes a pet and so she has someone to help her take care of this dog and give it the time to run free and enjoy life in a way that you can't when you are being a seeing eye dog for someone so despite training registration and therapeutic benefits that therapy dogs provide they don't have the same legal designation the same training or the same jobs as service dogs so therapy dogs can come and visit people in you know hotels nursing homes places like that in stores sometimes there's a therapy dog to help people stay calm but service dogs are allowed to go anywhere where a pet is not permitted and some people think that is really the distinction but it's not just about where you can bring your dog it really is about the job that your dog is doing for you if you have a disability you really need that dog and depend on that dog to help you and they really are working dogs they really have jobs and they provide their um, people with really important services and are highly trained to be able to do that specific job and of course like all dogs they give their people love and companionship and provide many other benefits and at some point I think we will have a talk just about the health benefits of dogs 
because even this morning there was another study that came out from Sweden saying that um, with all other factors uh, allowed for, people with dogs um, had a 10% higher incident of living longer than people without dogs, and particularly people who live alone with a dog. So that study was not as significant as some in the past that have been like 70% of people with dogs live longer than people without dogs. And part of it is that in Sweden, many of those people were also found to be smokers because they're able to look at the entire population of the country because of the way they keep track of people there. So it's an interesting new study. It's out in a journal just this past month or right now. So anyway, we will look at that down the line, but service dogs do really important jobs for people and um, they deserve the extra status that they have in being able to go places with their people. And it's really, they have to be able to go anywhere a person can go. And there has been some controversy and attempts in the past to use miniature horses as service animals. And this has been, you know, in some cases for like a bigger guy with Parkinson's, you might need something with the stature of a miniature horse to help prevent you from falling. I know a lot of people have used uh, Great Danes and other big breeds. They don't live long enough really for all the training and trouble it takes to make a really good service dog. But Newfoundlands and some of the other big breeds I've seen be great service dogs for people with Parkinson's. But uh, one of the things they say is that miniature horses, unlike dogs, because they're prey animals, uh, tend to look up and look around in their environment more than dogs do. I'm not sure I'm on board with that whole thought, but they say that because of that, the miniature horse will not run the person into like a stop sign and they have that strength to pick someone up if they have Parkinson's or to really block them if they start to fall. Now there are many other issues with keeping a miniature horse as a service animal. Where is he going to live? How, if you need him as a service animal, are you going to have the strength and ability to do all of the incredible work involved in keeping an animal like a horse? Um, so it's a lot different than just letting him out the back door like you would do with your Newfoundland if the Newfoundland was helping you. And there have been lots of controversy about whether other animals can be service animals. So there are people with service horses. I've known a couple of people who train miniature horses to do service work uh, for veterans. And uh, one person was blind and had a miniature horse to help her. And in fact, that horse was a lot smaller than a Newfoundland. It was probably the size of, uh, well, maybe a, a big lab or a, a German shepherd. So that's a little bit about service animals. So they really are relating to one specific person. They have a specific job to help that person who indeed has some kind of disability. And that person to become a service dog, you know, there's multiple things you need to do to be a service dog. You need to have lots of training. You have to have a specific skill. You need to have passed multiple tests from various different places. And you, yes, you're cute. <laughs> <laughs> and you need to have um, be able to demonstrate that the dog can help you with the things that your dog is supposed to help you with and um, doctor's notes and things like that. Um, medical records sometimes are required by uh, the places helping you get your service dog certification. So much more information to come. This very interesting area, this whole emotional support animal, therapy dog, comfort dog, service dog, what do all these things mean? And I've been happy to be able to give you an overview of all of these different designations that we have for dogs so that you can find the area where your dog and you might fit um, the best and be able to do some, some of these wonderful services with your dog. Um, being a comfort dog is an incredible, wonderful thing if people have dogs that they think would be able to do that and also themselves be able to handle that. And certainly therapy dogs are great. I know so many people with therapy dogs and there's a huge movement to keep therapy dogs in schools because children really um, need that kind of love and focus that a dog gives you. And it's a wonderful thing to have dogs in schools to help kids who are struggling with so many things in their home life, in their educational life, in their emotional lives. There's so much strain that kids are under. So having dogs with children can be a great thing. So 
We're going to get ready for the snow here. Hi, Wendy in Tennessee. You might even have snow where you are. I'm not sure. I think you are in the hilly, snowier part right now. And we have lots of other fun things we're doing today to get ready for the holidays. And, um, and I just want to end with a heart hug for the many horses and animals and people impacted by those horrible fires in California. I just can't get over the stories coming over different news and the internet about the horses and the people there. It is just incredible to imagine fires moving so fast that you can't get your horses out um, or even undo the paddock gates. It's just a horrible, horrible situation. So let's just take a moment and do a heart hug, crossing our hands over our heart, making a circle and a quarter with the six of a clock towards your feet. And you're gonna follow that clock around and back to the nine. Still snowing in Tennessee. The dogs are loving it. So I wish we could send some of our snow to California. Oh my gosh, wouldn't that be a miracle? Thanks for joining us today, and we'll see you tomorrow around 9.30 for another episode of Conversations with a Corgi. We're going to continue talking about different jobs that dogs have to help us. Thanks for joining us. Everybody have a great day. Stay warm and safe <laughs> with the shoveling and the plowing. It is pretty. We're still optimistic it'll melt after it comes at this time of year, so we can enjoy it when it's up over your knees that it's not so fun. Tristan would like to show you his necktie. Oh, hey, there. See, his beautiful necktie matches mommy's outfit. He's very proud of that necktie. So we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for joining us.